it saddens me that people really have not been around to know this history. The history of how cities like Norfolk were developed. Norfolk State Dean and Professor of History, Dr. Cassandra Newby Alexander, takes us to the place where she grew up. You stood here when you were a little kid. Yes, actually, I was usually standing right there. Our house uh, was on Leo Street. Digging through the old city directory from 1946 at the Slover Library, we found her family's name. We also looked at photographs from the Norfolk Housing and Redevelopment Authority that highlighted extreme poverty. Norfolk had a strict residential segregation mm -hmm. policy, yeah. and so blacks could not live anywhere else but in the neighborhoods designated as black neighborhoods. Archives from Old Dominion University show poor housing conditions in the 60s alongside civil rights demonstrations. Dr. Newby Alexander says most African-American families try to protect their children from seeing the worst aspects of segregation and racism, but they couldn't shield their kids from everything. I was well aware at the age of 12 when my homeroom teacher was being an absolute racist. And housing segregation a constant issue. And so when my father, who was a prominent physician, wanted to buy a waterfront property, uh, he had a hard time finding it because even in the late 1960s, a lot of uh, people would not sell to African Americans. And today, many areas throughout the region are predominantly white or black. Overtly racist federal, state, and local public policy from our past is re it reverberates and it continues to shape urban life at Hampton Roads in the present. Dr. Johnny Finn from Christopher Newport University is also the director of Living Together, Living Apart, a project that examines racial segregation in Hampton Roads. He created interactive maps that show racial inequalities. To understand why our community and others across the country look the way they do, Dr. Finn says you need to understand the history of discriminatory housing policies. Designed by the government after the Great Depression to promote home ownership, neighborhoods deemed worse got federally backed loans, but other neighborhoods, predominantly black neighborhoods, weren't given the same support, a practice known as redlining. The maps literally show us that black neighborhoods were not protected from foreclosure and white neighborhoods, some, many white neighborhoods were protected. Dr. Finn says there were 30 neighborhoods redlined in Hampton Roads. He says the impacts still felt today. Neighborhoods that, in, that were redlined in 1940, today have poverty rates that are two and a half times higher than neighborhoods that weren't redlined. He says redlining and other discriminatory policies of the past affect more than just housing issues. The legacy of redlining and, and housing segregation, it doesn't just live only in economic inequality in the present day. It, it kind of compounds into environmental inequality and also into health inequality. They tend to have fewer resources. There, there tends to be a, a, a brokenness to the neighborhood. Dr. Newby Alexander says we need to do a better job of addressing the wrongs of the past. We can't just move on because the damage has already been done. All it will do is get worse. She says Norfolk and other communities have historically been divided between blacks and whites. Let's go back and heal our city from the harm that was done to almost half of the citizens. That's the path moving forward. Knowing our shared history, the first step to being able to move forward to create a brighter future for all. Margaret Cavanaugh, News 3.